Hello, grade 10s. In this lesson, we introduce you to quadratic equations. Make sure that you know how to factorize quadratic trinomials, as that will be very important for today's lesson. Before we get into what a quadratic equation is, let's discuss an important concept that will be needed for this lesson. It is called the zero factor law, and it goes like this. If the product of two or more factors is equal to zero, then at least one of the factors must be zero. So if A times B equals zero, then either A is equal to zero or B is equal to zero. This makes sense because if you multiply any number by zero, the answer will always be zero. Okay, I think you are now ready to learn all about quadratic equations. Take it away, Omashni. Let's start with a reminder. Here are several equations. 0 is equal to 2x plus 3. 7 is equal to minus 5x minus 6. x squared minus 6x is equal to minus 5. x minus 2 multiplied by x is equal to 3. Now which of these do you think are quadratic equations? The first equation has x raised to the power of 1. This means that this is a linear equation. The second equation also has x raised to the power of 1. So this is also a linear equation. Now what about the third equation? Do you see that the x is raised to the power of 2? We say that the degree of the equation is 2. That means that the highest power of x used in the equation is 2. Any equation where the highest power of the variable used is 2 is called a quadratic equation. Did you know that quadratic comes from the Latin word quadro, which means to make square? And that is what we do to the x in this equation. Right, what about the fourth equation? What power is the x raised to? Did you say 1? Look again. The equation has not been multiplied out into its separate terms. We need to do this first before deciding what kind of equation it is. So let's multiply out each term. The x must be multiplied into each of the terms in the bracket. We get x times x gives me x squared. x times negative 2 gives me negative 2x is equal to 3. So you see that the power of x here is indeed 2. This is a quadratic equation. Right, equations are there to solve, so let's get going. When we studied linear equations, we had to keep remembering to balance the equation. Keep this in mind for quadratic equations. Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other side of the equation. Now let's look at the first example that we identified from our list as quadratic equations. x squared minus 6x equals to negative 5. Can we solve this equation? With linear equations, we try to get x on its own. Here, we need to do that too. But how? The trick is to get everything equal to 0 first. Then we'll use what we discovered about 0. Now, if we can get two factors multiplied together on one side of the equation and zero on the other side of the equation, that will be simple to solve. So we have x squared minus 6x equals to minus 5. If we add 5 to both sides of the equation, we will get x squared minus 6x plus 5 is equal to zero. Do you remember how to factorize this? We can factorize by using two brackets. Let's factorize and then see if that has got us any closer to solving the equation. Now, let's write our two brackets. We know that the x squared will factorize into x and x. And these two x's form the first term in both the brackets. Now, all that's left for us to do is find the numbers to fill in here and here. We need to write numbers in these brackets so that when we multiply out the numbers, the result is positive 5. Now how do we find the numbers? What part of the equation determines what number we should use? 5 times 1 would give us what we want, but so would negative 5 times negative 1. How will we decide which it should be? We could use positive 5 
and positive 1. But when we find the sum of these two factors, it gives us positive 6. But our middle term is a negative 6, which tells us that we must use negative 5 and negative 1. So negative 5 and negative 1. When we add these two factors, it gives us negative 6, which is the middle term. So we can write negative 5 here and negative 1 here. You should always check when you factorize. So if we multiply out these brackets again, it should give us the original equation. x multiplied by x gives me x squared. Minus 5 times x plus x times minus 1 gives me minus 6. Minus 5 times minus 1 gives me positive 5. After all of that, we haven't solved our equation yet. But we do have something we can work with. We now have two factors that when multiplied together gives us 0. Do you recognize this? We can write that x minus 5 is equal to 0 or that x minus 1 is equal to 0. This is simple to solve. So we get x is equal to 5 or x is equal to 1. Following equation, x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. This is a quadratic equation, but it doesn't have a middle term. Do you think we can solve it? Come on, this equation is also easy. It is a difference of two squares. We've got x squared, which is the square of a number, and 4, which can be written as 2 to the power of 2. So we can write the factors as, these are two brackets, x minus 2 and x plus 2. Now these are two factors multiplied together to equal to 0. So we can write x minus 2 is equal to 0 or x plus 2 is equal to 0. This simplifies to x equals to 2 or this simplifies to x equal to minus 2. Now some of you may be thinking that this seems a long way around. Why can't we just say x squared is equal to 4 and then our answer would be x is equal to 2. But what happened to our other answer of x equals to minus 2? This is why we prefer to get everything equal to 0 and then factorize. Whenever we work with squares and square roots, we need to think that there could be two answers. This way we are more sure of getting all the possible answers. Excellent! Now let's solve another quadratic equation that we looked at earlier x minus 2 multiplied by x equals to 3. But watch out though, can we say that x minus 2 is equal to 0 or x is equal to 0? No, that does not make any sense. Can you see why we spend so much of time looking at the properties of 0? We can only say that one of the factors is equal to 0 if we have a 0 on one of the sides of the equation. With a 3 over here, we can't make any claims about zero. So, the first thing we've got to do is multiply the x into the brackets and we get x squared minus 2x is equal to 3. Next, we want to get zero on this side over here. To do this, I need to subtract 3 from both sides of the equation. I get x squared minus 2x minus 3 is equal to zero. Now we can factorize this equation into two brackets. We know the first term of both brackets is x. We know that these two numbers when multiplied together must give us negative 3. We also know the sum of these two numbers must give us negative 2. Have you found these numbers yet? Let's have a look. Negative 3 times positive 1 would give me negative 3 here. If I add negative 3x plus 1x, it will give me negative 2x, which is the middle term. So we can write negative 3 here and positive 1 here. Let's do a quick check. x multiplied by x gives me x squared. Negative 3 multiplied by x gives me negative 3x plus x times 1x gives me negative 2x. Negative 3 multiplied by positive 1 gives me negative 3. Now it's easy. 
Here we have two factors multiplied together to give us zero. So we can write x minus 3 is equal to zero or x plus 1 is equal to zero. And this simplifies to x is equal to 3 or x is equal to minus 1. Are you with me still and ready for our next challenge? Here it is. Solve for x where 3x squared plus x minus 2 is equal to 0. So we've got to start off by factorizing this side. Do you see that 0 is already on one side of our equation? So we can write our two brackets. Now we need to factorize 3x squared. Do you see that we can't simply say x multiplied by x because when we multiply them out it does not give us 3x squared so we should write 3x and x now we need to decide which numbers fit in here we know the choices are either minus 2 multiplied by positive 1 or 2 multiplied by negative 1 so which one of these two are we going to choose We've got to check which way would work to get the middle term of positive 1x. Now, let's substitute these values. If I substitute plus 2 here and negative 1 here, let's multiply and see if we get the middle term of positive 1x. 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times negative 1 gives me negative 3x. And if I add it to positive 2x, I get negative 1x. So, these factors can't be used. Now we can put in minus 2 here and positive 1 here. Let's check quickly. 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times positive 1 is positive 3x. Minus 2x gives me positive x. Our middle term is right. Then minus 2 times positive 1 is negative 2. So we have our factors. Now we have two factors when multiplied together gives us 0. So we can write that 3x minus 2 is equal to 0 or x plus 1 is equal to 0. And if we simplify, remember we want to keep x on one side. I take the 2 over. I need to divide by 3 on both sides and I get x is equal to 2 divided by 3. Or x is equal to minus 1. You should now be able to identify quadratic forms and solve quadratic equations. Thank you for joining us, Grade 10s. Remember to look at the tasks for this section in the Equations and Inequalities task video. You'll also be able to learn more about equations on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn.